Uh, this year, the Nobel Prize in Economics was awarded to three uh, economists, uh, Karl Angrist and uh, uh, Benz, for their contribution to empirical study in labor economics and uh, uh, to methodology in code inference. The scientific background of this year's Nobel Prize is uh, code inference, particularly answering code questions using observational data. Uh, most applied science is concerned with uh, uncovering causal relationships. Uh, for example, we are interested in the impact of school closure on student learning and uh, the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Uh, in labor economics, uh, people are interested in the impact of low-skilled immigration, the effect of the uh, minimal wage, uh, and the effect of education on uh, earnings. So in the big data area, uh, a major source for scientific research is observational studies. Uh, that is, uh, we uh, research observe uh, an individual, and uh, uh, it is feasible. It is not feasible to use uh, controlled experimentation. Uh, there are two big challenges for uh, observational studies. Uh, the first is a method confounder, and the second is selection bias and missing data. Uh, they both lead to biased or even paradoxical inference. Uh, here I use uh, two graphs to illustrate these two challenges. The first uh, is, the, uh, is for confounder. Uh, suppose we are interested in the effect of x on y, but there always exists some common cause of both x and y uh, called confounder not observed. Uh, for example, uh, if we are interested in the effect of education on wage, then ability will be a method confounder uh, that is hard to measure and, uh, uh, and even hard to define. So, uh, ignoring the uh, confounder will lead to biased uh, or paradoxical inference, uh, such as the Simpson's paradox. That is, the marginal association between X and Y will be opposite to the conditional uh, association given the confounder U. On the right hand side is a graph for the uh, missing data problem. Uh, if uh, the missingness depends on both education and uh, on wage, then uh, the inference based solely on the observed data will be biased for causal inference about the effect of education on wage. Uh, the the laureate's uh, uh, card contribution is to showcase the power of using uh, natural experiment to uncover causal effects in labor economics. So here, uh, Natural experiment is an event or a situation that is an experiment conducted by nature, not by human. Uh, it is not under the control of the investigator or the subjects and the study, uh, such as uh, uh, the data of birth, uh, uh, gene variants, uh, and the natural disasters, such as the earthquake. They are not uh, under the control of people. Uh, such a natural experiment will generate a variation in the variable of interest uh, as if they have been randomly assigned. Uh, Carter work uh, on the minimal wage, on the impact of immigration, and on education policy challenging the conventional wisdom in economics. Uh, for example, they show that the increased minimum wage will not uh, reduce the employment. Uh, here is a, a minimum wage example. Uh, in February 1992, uh, New Jersey increased the state minimum wage, but uh, a, a neighbor state, uh, Pennsylvania, does not increase the minimum wage. Uh, this is a, a natural experiment. Uh, it is a macro policy. Uh, it is not under the control of the investigator or any uh, individual and uh, study. Uh, Carter and colleagues surveyed about 400 fast food stores, both in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, before and after the uh, minimum wage increase, and they apply the difference in different methods to inference the causal effect of uh, minimum wage. So, uh, the contribution of the other two laureates, uh, Inbens and Angrist, is to merge the conventional IV uh, instrument variable approach in economics and the potential outcome framework in statistics to clarify the key identifying assumption for causal inference. The potential outcome framework is formally established by statisticians Neyman and Rubin. So here we use y little x to denote the potential outcome that would be observed if the treatment x is set to little x. Uh, although uh, the actual treatment status may be another value, x prime. Then causal effect is defined as the comparison between uh, 
potential outcomes. The average color effect is a mean difference of different uh, potential outcomes. So this potential outcome framework is very straightforward and clear about the definition and the assumptions used for color inference. Uh, but the biggest challenge is that the potential outcomes are never jointly observed. So uh, in this uh, sense, color inference can be cast as a missing data problem. Uh, so uh, by uh, randomized experiment, we can recover the distribution of the potential outcomes from observed data. But in the presence of a method confounding, we cannot. In, uh, in economics, a conventional method for, handle, uh, for handling a method confounding is the instrument variable approach. An instrument variable is uh, independent of the method confounder, correlated with the treatment, uh, but, uh, don't, but uh, does not directly affect the outcome of interest. So if we are interested in the effect of education on wage, the ability will be a method confounder. And the previous authors used the quarter of birth as the instrument variable. Uh, previous authors have used this uh, kind of inference in economics. They mainly use the uh, structure equation model, uh, which is quite vague about the assumptions uh, for causal inference. Uh, so, uh, Inbens and Angrist, they merge uh, the IV framework in economics and the potential outcome framework in statistics to clarify the uh, identifying assumptions for IV. They uh, show that the classical uh, estimate by the instrument variable, in fact, is the local average treatment effect that in the presence of non-compliance. Uh, non So uh, this is, uh, apart from this year's Nobel Prize, uh, the prize in prizes two, two years are closely related to causal inference. Uh, the prize in 1989 was awarded to Harvard Moore for his contribution to the foundation of uh, economics, uh, econometrics, and uh, his analysis of simultaneous econo uh, economic structures. He clarified the causal interpretations of uh, this kind of supply and demand model. And in uh, 2000, the prize is awarded to Heckman for his uh, contributions to missing data and uh, sample selection, and to McFadden for his contributions to discrete choice. Uh, uh, these work are much, uh, are much paralleled by uh, statistical uh, uh, contributions uh, by statisticians. Uh, Fisher and Neyman studied uh, the randomized experiment, which is the gold standard for code inference. Uh, particularly in, uh, me in medical and uh, clinical research. Rubin and Rosenbaum propose ignorability, which is the foundation for uh, most uh, observational studies. And uh, Greenland, uh, Gung, and Wendeville study the definition of confounders, and Pearl uh, established the framework for causal structure learning and won the Turing uh, Prize in 2011. And Robbins and Murphy promote the research in time varying confounding and the dynamic treatment regime. Uh, they propose A learning, uh, which is quite close to Q learning in reinforcement learning. So confounding is a, a persistent concern in, uh, in causal inference. In recent years, people developed new IV methods, and uh, uh, they use regression discontinuity to handle uh, confounding that uh, vanishes uh, at the infinity. And uh, Confield uh, uh, originated and uh, Rosenbaum further developed sensitivity analysis that can be used to evaluate robustness of color inference against the key identifying assumptions. And a body recently uh, developed a synthetic control that can be used to evaluate the effect of macro policy using aggreg aggregated data. And we recently developed proximal inference and negative control methods for uh, confounding adjustment, uh, which can be viewed as an extension of the conventional IV approach. Uh, this proximal or negative control inference framework acknowledges that covariance measurements as uh, imperfect proxies of confounding and uh, decompose covariance into three parts. Z is correlated with the treatment X, W is correlated with the outcome Y, and C is correlated with uh, all variables, but is not presented here. 
So any assumption that Z does not affect Y or W and X does not affect W, we establish uh, identification and a semi-parametric inference uh, under this framework. Uh, in, uh, biomedical and epidemiological studies such proxies or negative controls are widely available. And we further uh, extend this framework to uh, complex longitudinal studies. And some other authors extend our framework to uh, a method funding for individualized treatment regimes. Uh, and recently, we apply this uh, proxy inference framework to uh, synthetic control for evaluation of a macro proxy using uh, aggregated data. So, uh, uh, so for another problem, missing data, uh, a fundamental concept for missing data is the missingness mechanism. It is called missing and random or ignorable if the missingness depends on only observed variables. And otherwise, it is called missing not and random or non-ignorable. So uh, there exists a large literature on missing and missingness and random, uh, but for missing not and random, the research is quite sparse. Uh, we observe that for many uh, commonly used fully parametric models, identification does not hold. That is, uh, the parameter of interest cannot be uniquely determined even with an infinite number of samples. So we further developed uh, identification and inference for semi-parametric and non-parametric models with the aid of uh, auxiliary variables such as instrument variable or shadow variable. And in a recent work, we study the callback design for non-response adjustment. Uh, this is because in almost all modern ways, researchers uh, will continue to contact non-respondents, and the contact attempts are recorded, which are known as uh, callback data. For decades in uh, social, political, and survey research, uh, researchers have used the callback data to monitor, uh, call, uh, to monitor response rate, uh, but, in, uh, but they are not quite widely used in statistical analysis until recently. So we propose an identification and uh, semi-parametric inference framework for using callback for uh, non-response adjustment. Okay, uh, apart from uh, confounding and missing data problems, uh, call inference concerns a broader area of problems, uh, including interference. Interference is, uh, it plays a key role in vaccine study because a vaccine uh, protects not only the person who takes it, but also the people around. Uh, so it is very important for a uh, vaccine study uh, to, uh, to make vaccine policy. Uh, other uh, problems include mediation analysis and uh, causal mechanism, uh, individualized treatment regime, and uh, data fusion. So uh, in recent work, we study uh, causal inference with a uh, multi-source data test where different variables are observed in different data sets, and we can uh, combine them to make a better causal inference. So, uh, people are also interested in the, com uh, in the integration of causal inference and uh, uh, AI or uh, machine learning. At several points, they are, uh, they are very closely cl uh, connected. Uh, data theory and missing data, and the transfer learning, domain adaptation, and semi-supervised learning are closely related dynamic treatment regime and reinforcement learning, uh, individualized treatment regime and classification, uh, semi-parametrics and double device machine learning, they are uh, closely related. Uh, but there are still uh, bigger gaps between call inference and machine learning. Uh, here is a graph I stole from, uh, from some website about the keywords for uh, next year RCLR submissions. Uh, it seems to me uh, very few of them are related to causal inference. So there are still big gaps between causal inference and machine learning. Okay, uh, this is my uh, last slide. So, uh, how more, uh, the economics, how more Heckman, Card, Angrist, and Inbens uh, promote causal inference in economics. However, uh, statisticians made a prominent contribution to causal inference and its applied area. Uh, but these contributions are undervalued. And the confounding and the selection bias are persistent uh, concerns in observational studies. And we uh, remain to study, 
develop a new method for uh, confounding adjustment and uh, non-response non adjustment. Uh, there are a few points where code inference and machine learning can merge, but there are still big gaps. Uh, I think that's uh, maybe one of the uh, uh, concern of uh, this uh, Syria Research Center for future research. Okay, that's all my uh, presentation. Thank you.